from the motherland of Nigeria to Canada. Here is a story and journey of an aircraft maintenance engineer. What's going on guys? It's your boy Peter and I'm back again with another video. Today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit little more different than me. I'm gonna be telling you guys a little bit more about myself. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I've been making a lot of videos on how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer, how to do this, how to do that. But I'm not really telling you guys about myself, man. And that's because I feel like we all have, a lot of people that actually do watch my videos we all have the same background, we all have the same career path, we all have the same interests. So I'm going to tell you guys, you know, the mistakes I made, the obstacles I went through, so you guys can be educated, you know what I'm saying? So you guys can know what, um, the things I went through so you don't make the same mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And also to motivate you guys, man, you know what I'm saying? Because that's my main goal here on YouTube, not only for you guys to become an aircraft maintenance engineer, but also to lift ourselves bro we gotta we all have we got we all gotta be successful man you know what i'm saying so i'm here to tell you guys a little bit more about myself so for you guys don't know i was born in nigeria i moved to canada when i was 16 as an international student i went to centennial college in toronto canada for you guys don't know i went through the program of aircraft maintenance engineering it was a two-year program uh, my first year here in Canada and also in school as an international student was kind of a mixed experience, um, which is good and bad. You know what I'm saying? I remember my first year coming here, it was hard for me. My, educate, my education on life was good because I've always been that smart dude since when I was little. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to my social life, my social life, I feel like was really bad and that was because i was more of an introvert reserved person you know what i'm saying that's i'm not that type of person that will go up to a total stranger and be like hey you want to be my friend you know what i'm saying but i've always been that person that you know you're gonna put me here i'm gonna be here you know what i'm saying but that kind of affected my education life that was because in life but you have to have to you have to get a balance in everything you gotta have a good life a good social life and you gotta have a good education life now you're not gonna be that person that's gonna be partying all day forget oh i'm mean, you forget that you're an international student and you came to canada with a purpose you know what i'm saying so you gotta be able to balance both of them um for me my social life was really bad but what helped me how was and i'm pretty sure most schools do have this right so for my for my college, Centennial College, they had this international student event that a lot of international students from different countries can actually connect. Um, luckily, that's I started putting myself out there more, and that's how I, you know, started making a little bit more friends. But when it comes to my education, life was pretty good. But the only problem was, which I still feel like it's kind of too much on uh, my first year as an EME, we had my courses and um, it was cr too crazy, especially when it comes to finals. Bro, I remember finals, I'll, sometimes I will have like three exams a day and I have to study the whole semesters, you know what I'm saying? The whole classes for that courses. And it was kind of overwhelmed, um, too, many, too many courses. Um, but when it came to my second year, uh, you know, you know, your second year, that's when you actually choose if you want to become maybe avionics, avionics technician, which is the electrical part of it, or you want to go into aircraft maintenance. So I went into the maintenance side and I remember my first year, we had four courses, you know what I'm saying? So I, know I had a little more, a little more time to myself, but my first year, man, I was studying, bro. I didn't have no time. I was studying like a motherfucker. But yeah, by second year was pretty good. Um, then I graduated after my graduation, man. Man, that's when life started, bro. I was like jobless for like two, three months. I could not get a job, bro. And it was kind of my mistake. It was kind of my fault. I put the blame on myself. 
And that was because, like I said, I was an introvert person back then. Now I make friends easily. But back then, I didn't really know how to make friends. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really know how to put myself out there. So the little friends I had then, I was like, nah, I don't want to I don't want to lose my friend. I want to stay here. But opportunities were outside my cities. Opportunities were in Quebec. Opportunities were in Calgary. Opportunities were in BC. But I was like, nah, I want to stay because I have family, I have friends here. I don't want to go to a whole different city where I don't know anything. I was dumb as fuck, bro. For you guys that are watching this, once you graduate from school, to get that first job, I'm telling you, bro, you got to leave your city, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you got to go to motherfucking Yellow Knights to get our first job, what you need is to get our first job. And once you get our first job, then once you're working, you can start putting yourself out there, start sending your resume to the city you want to stay. But our first job, you know what I'm saying? You got to go to wherever city, bro. You know, but for me back then was, I didn't really want to leave my friends then. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nah, I don't want to go to these cities. I don't want to go there. I want to stay in Toronto because I have family and friends there. But I was dumb as fuck then. But luckily though, I got a job at Bombardier Aerospace. Um, and I worked in Bombardier, but during my time in Bombardier, I was still putting myself um, out there. I was still setting my resumes and confidence. So during my time in Bombardier, I got laid off because of COVID, right? Um, but luckily, that was kind of like a high opening for me. I'm like, bro, like, I have not gotten my, <laughs> I have not gotten my license. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta start doing some with my life because when I was in Bombardi, I didn't have my like. You can't get you, you can't easily get your license in Bombardi because it's a manufacturing company, right? You gotta work in a maintenance facility for you to get your license. Um, but back then I'm like, bro, I'm not getting my license, bro. Like I'm wasting time. Time is going. I'm not getting younger anymore. Um, so doing that, that's why for me COVID was a big blessing for me, bro. During that time, I started putting myself out there more. You no, know, I started talking to people more, and they were like, "Yo, this is, you know, the best way to get your first job is to apply to these MRO small companies." You know, I'm saying most of them do hire people. Um, so I started sending my resume to all these small companies, and luckily, I got a job in um, Quebec. You know, it's a it's a, it's a pretty big uh, MRO company. Um, for the pay, when it comes to pay, don't expect that much when it comes to, especially for apprentice, um, your first job, don't expect that much. Most companies will not pay you, as an apprentice, most companies will not pay you $40 or $50 an hour, nah, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get some small, but once you get your experience up and also your license, then you're gonna be making more money, but yeah, when I first got my maintenance um, job, it was hard on me because uh, it was good and bad, and that was because I already had the experience from Bombardier on how to use all these tools. But it was also hard on me because now I'm actually in maintenance, and I have fucking graduated like years ago. I have forgotten all what I learned in school, so now it's like I'm teaching myself again. You know what I'm saying? So. My experience first year in a maintenance facility was a little bit more challenging for me. You know what I'm saying? Try to remember how to read the AMM, how to, you know what I'm saying? How to do this, how to do that. But luckily, I was in a company whereby they actually do care about the employees. You know what I'm saying? They were ready to help you out. I swear the licensed guys, they would actually sit you down and teach you. You know what I'm saying? Those are the companies I would recommend you guys to um, go for especially when you get your first job i'm not really gonna say names here but you can go online and see those companies yourself you know what i'm saying um so i got lucky you know um what is it called oh my first day uh as a maintenance um what is it called my, my as a maintenance apprentice um but during that time i i had this i always for me it's like i always have this mentality that Wherever I am right now, it's not the final destination. You know what I'm saying? For me, I'm always thinking like 10 steps ahead. So during that time, I'm like, man, I'm not going to be staying down. I'm not going to be staying here making motherfucking $20 an hour. I was ready to make more. So during that time, I was ready to still putting myself out there, still putting my resume out there, trying to get something better. And luckily, I got another job in 
Halifax, Nova Scotia, Halifax, um, a little bit more money, a little bit more salary. And during that time, I got another job here in Quebec. Now, now I'm finally in Quebec, right? So my, from what I've learned during my journey is um, for you guys that are considering going through this program as an aircraft methods engineer, especially for international students, um, your first year is going to be a little bit tough for you, but I want you guys to have this mentality like having this goal is the um, so obtaining this goal, obtaining this license, obtaining success is the final goal. You know what I'm saying, bro? I remember a lot of times I would be like, I would just be staying in my house and like just be crying, bro. Like I was young when I was living alone. Imagine you living alone, 16. Your family are back home. Your parents are back home. They only come to see you once in a while. I was like depressed, bro. You know what I'm saying? But what kept me going was I had this goal in mind. You know what I'm saying? Which has been successful. And that's what I'm here to tell you guys, bro. You know what I'm saying? For you guys that try to go into this program, I want you guys to have the mentality that you getting your you getting your license is not the final goal, bro. You getting your ACA is not the final goal in life. You having your business is not the final goal until you reach that success limit for you, which I think for me is like, man, I want to be so successful that I want to have my own company. I want to have this. I want to have that. You know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to have this mentality of, you know, going, but it's not going to be easy, especially your first, I'll say your first two years, bro, because now it's a lot of changes going on. You know what I'm saying? Especially for you guys don't, that don't speak English, bro. Like I had friends from Korea, bro. Korea, they don't speak English. I'm like, bro, how the f you guys do it? You know what I'm saying? But what kept them going was because they had this goal in mind. They have this belief that they can be successful. And I know guys like they started off in school without even speaking English. They could not even speak English, bro. And now these guys are doing great in life. You know what I'm saying? They have this a guy I know of seeing as a senior. We went to college together and now these guys the contractor making almost three four hundred thousand dollars a year i'm not even joking you know what i'm saying it started off his business his business created that agency now his agency is making crazy money you know what i'm saying so for you guys that are coming here as an international student especially for aircraft methods engineer you just know like your first day here it's going to be a little bit tough um not only educationally but like just in general life in general you know what i'm saying so Man, you gotta know that, boy, you have a goal in life and you don't wanna be that person that will just come here and be partying and just be wasting time. Cause bro, time, I had friends then, back then they were just wasting time, bro. I'm like, yo, your parents spent a lot of money. You guys are international student know this, right? We are paying crazy amount of money for tuition. You know what I'm saying? And back then I was paying almost eight thousand dollars per semester you know what i'm saying that's not that's not no chicken money that's a lot of money you know what i'm saying so for you guys that come here as an international student you gotta have this mentality of you no know, greatness you know what i'm saying you have to have this mentality of i gotta go for it bro you know what i'm saying i had guys that were wasting time you know what's wasting time bro like why are you here for why are you here for bro you know what i'm saying so one of the mistakes I made then was, I still regret to now was, I was not ready to leave my comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? I was not ready to leave my city because, oh, I had friends. But most of those friends now, I don't know. I don't, bro, it's been like two months without, we haven't even spoken, bro. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has their own life to live. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, when you get out, once you graduate, bro, be ready to go to like a whole different location. Be ready to move, bro, because you just gonna stay in that city. Imagine you stay in your city and you're not progressing, bro. One of my last job, I had guys that have been working there for six months complaining that oh, they're not paying us good, they're not paying us that, they're not paying us. Bro, and you been here for six years. What are you doing, bro? You're complaining you don't like this company. They Hey, bro, they all you stop complaining. Like, what is the point of you complaining and still staying there? To me, it makes no sense, bro. You're not happy where you are and you're still complaining. Tell me how that shit makes sense, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, for you guys that are watching this video, 
I want you guys to have that strive to like to greatness. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even close to where I want to be in life. I'm not where I want to be in life, bro. I'm not even close to it. But for me, it's like I'm always thinking about the next step. How can I generate more income? How can I be successful? How can I do this? Bro, once I get my bro, my once I get more experience in aviation, I'm thinking of going into contracting. You know, starting my own business, starting my own contracting. Because for you to be a good contractor, you gotta have fucking good experience. You can't be a motherfucking apprentice and be a contractor. You gotta have more experience. But once I get out more experience in methods, I'm thinking of going to contract and starting my own business. Starting my and that's what I want you guys to have. I want you guys to have that mentality too, yeah. You know what I'm saying? My main goal here is not only to educate you guys or being an aircraft methods engineer, but also to make all of us successful bro i want all my people to be successful i want my friends to be successful i want my family to be successful you know what i'm saying so yeah those are the that's a little bit more but i'm not gonna make this video a little bit too long i don't want you guys to watch you know 50 minute 50 minute video you know what i'm saying i'm gonna make it quick as possible but yeah that's a little bit more about myself i still got more videos coming up um story time all those bullshit i still got those coming up later on but yeah that's a little bit more about myself man hopefully you guys can learn something about you know my storyline and if you guys have any more questions um let me know down in the comment section like i said bro i'm here to the little i know i'm here to help you guys bro i'm here to educate you guys and if you guys have any more information you want to educate me on i'm always my doors are always open you know what i'm saying I have Instagram, I have comment section, I have everything, but you can always DM me, you can always drop it down in the comment section. And I want to say big thank you to you guys that have been supporting me. You no, know, I really appreciate it, bro. Like, I remember when I started this channel with zero subscribers, you know, I was going to start with fitness, but I felt like fitness, I didn't really have that much experience. And I could, I don't really have that much connection with fitness, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when I started making more, maintenance videos i feel like you know i actually have a purpose here, you know what i'm saying and i really appreciate you guys that have been showing me a lot of support bro i don't know how much i can thank you guys bro really appreciate you guys for you guys that are watching um that have not subscribed yet please show your boy some love man you know what i'm saying my goal is to get this channel to a thousand two thousand subscribers man by the end of this year so show your boy some love share this video Share this video with your grandma, your mom, your teacher, your everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate all the love, man. I got more videos coming for you guys, man. Appreciate all the support, everything. If you guys have any more questions, you can drop it down in the comment section. My Instagram is pretty janet. You can always follow me on Instagram if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate all the love. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Love you guys.